Faith and wisdom, by the way. Faith and wisdom. Yeah, those two are pretty important, aren't they? They are. Yeah. Those are two good things to have. Without faith, you can't please God. That's right. The um, Talking with you and your sister, it's, it's very interesting because getting the whole story of you both has been what your dad did, a miracle, giving his heart to God and really seeing God move. I mean, he planted a seed as a pastor and all these great evangelists and, and that have come through and yeah. seen miracles. Yeah. I mean, he really planted that seed in you guys, whether you were in music or or in pastoring, you really have quite the heritage of we what do. happened. It's amazing. And I, I, I long for that for other people, but Cheryl and I experienced something that a lot of people don't experience, but it's never too late. Right. Never too late to to have a hunger for that. When Paul said hunger after the best gifts, uh, in in Corinthians, mm -hmm. he was talking about everybody, not just those of us who've grown up in it uh, and who know what it's about. The best gifts that God has, not only the, the nine gifts of the Spirit, but every gift that He's given are the best gifts that God has. And and in that, of course, is miracles. But um, but I think for me, knowing that I'm supernatural. Um, Explain. Well, I, I preached a series. God laid it on my heart a couple of years ago, and I started on Thursday nights. We have Thursday night midweek. And I started uh, talking about supernatural, and God wouldn't let me go. And I preached for a year and a half almost on it. And God kept revealing to me that we are supernatural beings being born again. We're supernatural. Right. We are not normal, natural, everyday human beings, but we are supernatural. The supernatural core of our being, Cheryl and I had a head start on that because of our family life. Our, our, so that's the nuggets of and the mm -hmm. seeds that my father and mother planted in us. But then we had to cultivate that. We've got to do something with that. Right. So most of us who are Christians, are, we have that supernatural seed of Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit then is advancing that if we allow it. And, that's, and that for me, how do, how do I do that better? How do, I, how do I approach and create the supernatural in me and let it overcome the flesh, the natural, the normal things that I would normally do, which is my bend because it's the way I was born. Sure. Uh, I'm not exactly like my father. I'm not exactly like my mother. I'm me. And God knew that. He said in the womb, he created us to be an individual. So at that point, I, I have to cultivate those things in me that, that show him to whoever I talk to today so with what's, you. What's the key? What's, if you had to make it down into three keys... Well, to, to, to let the supernatural come forward, what would it be? Well, Jesus said it pretty clearly. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Those three things are, are the things that you would do. So when you deny yourself, that's recognizing that supernatural is who you are. Right. I don't, it's not me anymore. And we've been asking a question and, and I got tired of hearing people, God, what do you want me to do? God, what do you, what's my, what, what do you want for me? I just said, that's not the question because that's still about me, isn't it? God, what do you want? End of question. Hmm. That's it. What do you want? When we ask that, we take ourselves out of the, uh, the, the equation. And it's all about God. Yeah. So when we land on that question and look for that answer, God, what do you want? That's what Jesus always says. I want to please my Father. Right. What do you want, God? I'm willing. Yeah. So what do you want? That's how we do it. We get past ourselves, deny ourselves, take up the cross, which is not a fun deal. Right. Because if you look at all the cross ex exhibits and portrays, it's not what we want to do. But when we we have to deny ourselves before we'll ever take up the cross. He had it in right order. Because mm -hmm. you can't follow Jesus without taking up the cross. You can't take up the cross without denying yourself. Right. You won't. You can, but you won't. won't. So that's what supernatural means to me. To move into supernatural, you have to deny yourself, take up the cross, and then follow Jesus. And we fail at that. Mm -hmm. Flesh comes up. Paul's a pretty good one to talk about that right, in Romans. Is. And he talks about it a lot. He said, flesh keeps rising. I want to do what's right. I can't and I don't. And I go back. And, but God's after a repentant heart, isn't he? Yeah, he is. David proved that. Man after my own heart. How come? Because he was repentant. He was. And, it, you know, you're talking about a lot of which we talk about on the program. It comes down to one thing, and that's being the one. And when you were, your, your dad did that, um, you know, and you guys have done that where you, you decided to be the one that you're going to stand for what you're standing for, preach what you know to preach, yeah. sing what you know to sing, 
and see God move. Um, so many revivals that have come and awakening started with one person that stood up and said, I'm going to do something. I don't care if anybody else does, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So here's my question for you. In light of all that and all that we've talked about in your past and your history with your dad's church and even the miracles in his life growing up as you were a young man, the you have a very unique perspective with all that you've done. What is really a revival mean for you? Well, I think it has to be personal first. Explain. I can't, I can't stand behind the pulpit here on this platform and tell these people out here that they need to have revival if I'm not having it. <clears throat> it's empty How do you words. keep it fresh then? Um, I spend two days a week uh, not in this building. Uh, two days a week in the Word, in prayer, yeah. in study. Uh, Thursday, which we have church on Thursday, and Saturday before Sunday, I, I spend uh, not here. Right. Um, there's too much goes on around you when you're not um, silent and listening. Uh, I think we talk too much, preachers particularly. Yeah. And uh, not too long, but too yes. much. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, I think we just talk too much. I think yeah. we, we are always talking and we don't listen enough. God has some things he wants to say to us, both in the word and in the Holy Spirit. So if I don't take that time and isolate myself or shut everything else out, where I can just hear from the Lord, I can't have revival. Mm -hmm. I just can't. And that, that goes for the congregation too. And that's hard because they got pressure. I mean, they're having to work sure. for a living. They're, you know, got their kids. They got, you know, their wife and their husband and their job and their, you know, but if we allow fishing and golf and, you know, our hobbies to take us away from those moments when we should be listening to God, we have to be real careful. Again, we have to crucify that flesh. We have to deny ourselves. So somewhere along the way for revival to happen in the church, I mean, I remember uh, I showed you that little book w with my mom and dad and, and Cheryl and I in here. This is their song and picture album, this little book. And, and I remember in that church, um, we don't have church like we used to have it. Cheryl will remember, uh, we used to have church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and then we had three prayer meetings a week. And, and we stayed in there until the glory fell. Right. We didn't, we didn't just you know, take five minutes, go into the prayer room, pray, and, and then say, well, I gotta go on because I got too much to do. But our world presses in on us now. It's a different day. Uh, but the early church found it and they were under more pressure than, than we are. I mean, they That's had right. different pressures, but I mean, they were outcasts and yeah. they were, they were to be beheaded, you know, if they found right. it. So it was underground. It was, uh, I think we've had it too easy. So we take it for granted too much. Yeah. But true revival won't come until we deny ourselves and take up the cross and, and say, Jesus, it's all about you. And I got to, I got to spend more time with you. I got to have more of you. Uh, that's the only way we can see revival. And that's the only way I think we're going to go back to a place where, uh, where, we kind of long for if we've experienced it in the past. I mean, under, under the ministry of these men of God and women of God, I remember 13 week revival we had one time, 13 weeks, seven days, seven nights mm -hmm. a week and Sunday right. morning, 13 weeks an evangelist came and the church was filled uh, every night. Again, I, I know it's different day to day uh, and maybe we can't do it the same way. But like I said, God won't do it that way every time. He'll do it a new way. So I think I think the goal is, though, to, to create in, inside ourselves this sanctuary, this place where God can be. And I tell these people, I hope that you come in here expectant, not come in here where I have to get you to expect. Mm -hmm. right. If That's you come good. expecting, we're already way ahead. We, we've got to step up on it already. We're, you know, we're down the road a little bit because if you come in here dead, dry, right. not having spent time with God at all, it's hard for the pastor. It's hard for the singers, you know? Yeah. We've got to have some interior work in us to prepare us. I love that song, Prepare Me to Be a Sanctuary. Yeah. Lord, prepare me. And that's really the key. I think the challenge uh, for every pastor is to be a shepherd. Um, people searching for the spectacular instead of the supernatural. Event versus process. What we is because we're so. It's because we are so uh, immediate 
we got to have it right now. I mean, it's like I go to my internet, and you know, it used to be, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, all, right. all that, and then about two minutes later, you might get a hookup. Yeah. Or it might kick you off and you might have to start you over. You should go yeah. fix your coffee and yeah, <laughs> That's everything. Right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, But now, you know, I want the fastest internet. And when I put it in there, I want it, I want it right now. Yeah. And I think people come to church the same way. Let's go to the event. Let's go, let's, let's go to the event. Let's go, get, let's go get powered up. Let's plug in. Right. And let's, let's let our hair stand on end, you know, and, yeah. and let it wave in the breeze of the Holy Spirit. All that is good. That's what I remember. I remember that. But there's a process after that. So if we just do event to event to event to event, there's no maturity. There's no life in that beyond the next event. What's the process? The process is allowing God to do in you what that event has opened the door for. I mean, pos the, the miracles swing on the door of opportunity. You, if you don't give God the opportunity to make process happen in you, you won't see miracles. I mean, you'll see them, but you won't experience them. Right. I'll say it that way. You won't experience miracles without allowing God's process to happen. Now, you may get healed in an instant, and that is a miracle. I know that. Mm -hmm. a miracle. But the process of growing in Christ brings you into this supernatural we talked about earlier, where you begin to realize, I'm a supernatural being. I can live in health. I don't have to be sick all the time. I don't have to um, be broke all the time. I don't have to lack. I don't have to have all this trouble that our people around me are having because I'm in process. God is doing something in me. I'm not about the spectacular any longer. I'm about the supernatural that's working in me. So I love the events and we, we need them. Right. But what we do in the event is we raise the bar to this level. And if we don't go above that next time, we're disappointed. But that's not process. Because process is a slow growth that God works in us. And you can read all through the New Testament and you see that happening in, in the men of God. Mm. And even in the Old Testament, same thing. The process of God doing things in you, that is a miracle. There is no miracle unless it brings glory to God. We call everything a miracle these days. It's not, you know. Uh, miracles bring glory to God. So in the process, we find the miracles that bring glory to God. We find things that happen that seem outside the norm. Well, that's where God is. Uh, he is a supernatural God that brings supernatural things to people who are willing to be in supernatural process. That's just the way He works. That's good. Boy, that's great. That's great stuff right there.